welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I'd give you guys an update on the blue Himalayan poppies. Uh, they're also known as um, Mechanopsis poppies. So anyway, for those of you guys who've been following me on Instagram, you guys probably saw that uh, this past Sunday I went to Longwood Garden to see the blue Himalayan poppies blooming. I took pictures, everybody was blown away with it. Just totally understandable because I was blown away with it. And I know a couple of people were interested in getting some and I think I told people that there wasn't anywhere in the US that I saw that sold them. And as far as I knew that was true, I had been looking and searching with them for a while. Um, I did ask somebody at Longwood where they got their cultivars from, their a stock, and they said it was from a company in, um, in long in Alaska and I, I did some sort of search with Longwood and I figured out the nursery where who who was really known for growing them in Alaska but it seemed to be kind of defunct or maybe it was a different nursery name but at the end of the day I eventually after searching and searching and changing my search terms found a single U.S. supplier for the Himalayan blue poppies and it is called Far Reach Farms. Now if you're following me on Instagram and especially if you look at my stories you'll probably notice I put a link to that plate um to that particular um page where you can get it. Um I did order a couple. Um they called me today because I made a mistake on my order and since they were on the phone I decided to talk to them because Himalayan poppies are not native to the U.S. They are from the Himalayan, Himalayan mountains. And so that's a completely different climate than most places in the U.S. In fact, uh, the only places that are probably close enough to that are going to be obviously places like Alaska and places like in New England, you know, maybe some coastal and mountainous regions. New Jersey is not one of them. So, you know, for me, the question I had was, is this, am I going to be able to perennialize this in a, a southern New Jersey garden? Or is this one of those types of things that I'm going to have to treat it as an annual or biennial? Um, if you guys have been watching my channel, you know that I have started some seeds. I do have some sprouts. And with the blue Himalayan poppies, I'm probably going to end up with maybe three plants with the purple Himalayan poppies, I'm probably going to end up with a few more, maybe more like five or seven. So I did talk to the woman. And so I wanted to clarify and correct some things I think I may have mentioned in other videos. Um, as I said before, most people don't have these. These it, It's one of those things that's really difficult to start and, and that sort of thing. And so I was doing a lot of research on them. And a lot of the information I found was or like um, gardening bloggers from back in the day, those websites, I don't even think the people were blogging anymore. And so one of the things I think I mentioned in a video was that um, if you started from seed, basically if you got a bloom or you got a bloom stalk the first year, you needed to cut it off so that it would perennialize because if you let it bloom, it wouldn't come back. Now that is what I read on various blogs, obviously. <laughs> I've never had it, so I really don't know. I was just going by what p apparently p other people had done and seemed to have success uh, the next year with getting it to bloom. Now, you know, the thing is, I'm not really sure what they were looking at. <laughs> um, and so I'm not really clear on that. But when I talked to the to the, the person from the farm they said number one they said they wanted to let me know there was something on the internet that was about the plant it was not true and they said basically if you cut off like the bloom stalk like it's the first time you you know basically get it it'll help the plant perennialize that is not true okay so menocopsis well, those, at least the blue ones are. I would imagine the purple ones and the white ones are probably similar. Uh, but Mechanopsis poppies, did I say Mechanopsis? I'm sorry, guys. It's Mechanopsis poppies. The Himalayan blue poppies um, are kind of like hydrange, some hydrangeas in that essentially they they bloom on old wood. Okay, but it, they don't have woody stems. They are like the typical green herbaceous stems, but those are referred to as crowns. So when you start a plant, 
obviously something that's new is going to have a small crown. Uh, they're not going to bloom their first year. They bloom their second year, but they bloom from the old crown. So the crown that it's forming this year, that, that, that I guess like the plant part, that's what's going to bloom next year. Now, next year when it comes back, in addition to the main center stalk, it's going to put two, usually she said it will sprout like two additional crowns. So those crowns will not bloom the first year, but this that second year they will bloom. So what she told me is that once the crown blooms, that crown dies. So that's why she was saying, well, if you cut off the bloom, you know, it's it's not necessarily going to make it perennialize anymore. Like she said, if you only have one crown that has a bloom on it, it's going to die. The plant is going to die. It has to have um, more than one, you know, crown uh, in order for it to, you know, to come back and bloom to get some sequ sequential blooms. So I just wanted to correct that. Um, the other thing she told me is that they do like cooler temperatures. Um, obviously, that's why places like New England um, and even in the mountains and places like Alaska do so well. They can handle some, you know, warmer temperatures. And she said, for example, if, you know, during the summer you were to get like a 90 degree day or a week, they'd be okay. But if you got like weeks and weeks on end of 90 degree weather, that would kill the plant. Um, she did recommend that I grow it in shade. It was just fine because um, on this side of my house, that's the north side of my house, uh, the, the house blocks the sun. So obviously it's shade on top of that. There are two big holly trees. So the, that entire area is shade. Um, it gets a little bit of indirect sun because when the sun rises in the east, but for the most part, um, even with that, it, like I said, it's indirect. There is no direct sun in that area. Uh, but so one of the things I'm going to do this summer is I'm going to put a thermostat over there because what I want to see is when the temperatures get really, really hot, what's the temperature in the shade? Because, you know, if it's 90 some degrees outside, but it's like, you know, 78 or so in the shade, those plants may be good. But one thing I'm probably going to strongly consider doing is um, I if I plant them in the ground, it's the type of thing that if we're going to have like weeks of 90 degree weather, it may be best to for me to dig them up, put them in a pot and just bring them inside since, it'll, you know, there will be air conditioning and that sort of thing and then replant them out in the fall. So that is something that I'm going to try. Um, and hopefully, and we'll see what happens. Apparently, the the uh, the me Mechanopsis poppies from this particular um, farm are the um, Lingholm hybrids. They do have a lot of seeds. So if by some chance it dies, you know, if it's bloomed, I should get seeds. So uh, the one that I'm getting, I want to say it's either a second year crown or third year crown. So it should bloom this year in my garden. And so I'm really excited about that. Um, the plants are about $16 a piece, which honestly, quite really, quite frankly, really isn't that bad, you know? So I only got two. Um, I may get a couple more in the future. Um, it's one of the type of things, because I did ask her, is this a plant you guys typically carry? She said yes. She said they usually have uh, more than one availability during the year. She said, so basically, if you go there and it's sold out, if you you know, enter your email into the notification, like notify me uh, as soon as they're available, you'll get it, you'll, you know, they'll let you know and you can go ahead and order them. So yeah. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, guys, I'm really excited about that because, um, you know, although I, I'm going to continue to try to go grow it from seed and, you know, because especially now that I've sprouted it and I see how we did it, I think I can reproduce it for next year. It is nice to know that, <clears throat> if I'm stressed for time, I can get it from another, I can't, there is a supplier for it. So, <clears throat> when I talked to them earlier, they said they had eight in stock. And so if you order them, you know, I'm just, you know, if there's a rush, I'm just letting you know, they only had eight in stock, but she said probably in another few weeks, they would have more available. And that's just kind of how they do it. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys found that interesting. Um, I hope you guys found that helpful uh, because like I said, 
uh, trying to grow these from seed is very, very difficult. And it's nice to know that there is a supplier, or at least one supplier in the US that actually does it. Uh, the other suppliers I saw were all in Canada and they didn't ship to the US. So anyway, guys, if you have any additional questions, let me know. I'm going to put a link to the place in my in the description box. And if you're able to get your hands on some, let me know because, you know, I'll certainly post pictures, but I like to see pictures of everybody else's garden. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.